on launch here for flight number 15 from EJ. First time launching on the mountain with the new harness. Super excited. Yeah, buddy. I did the train hill for a few flights. Got a feel for landing with it. And we're up, dude. Oh, great lift, baby. Sick. Yeah, not gonna worry about the zipper yet. <laughs> yeah, so I'm saying there, not worrying about the zipper yet. Just focusing on flying, focusing on this path. This is the same path that I was on when I ended up having to go to that alternative landing zone, St. Mary's. I don't want to end up in that situation again. It's feeling good. My angle is so much different, it's crazy. And so I'm commenting there about how different the angle is with this harness. Um, much lower to the bar, which is good. That's where I should have been this whole time. And a much flatter, like a bubble, you know, leveling bubble horizon. A much more level instead of my head being above my toes. My head's much more level with my toes, which is great for aerodynamics. One thing I did notice is, and I'll comment on this later in the flight as well, is this made me a little bit, just slightly air sick at times, because nice. I couldn't see the horizon the whole time. Sick, dude. Oh, I'm in a good spot. Let's go. Feeling lift, too. So similar to getting seasick, I think when you can't see the horizon, it's harder for your body to figure out what your inner ear is doing when you're not just walking around like we were evolved to do. And so you can see Willie up on the left there, just barely poking out. Thought about zipping it a little bit there to go for it. Oh yeah, dude. Man, I just feel so sleek in this harness. Like the difference is crazy. I can just like hear how much less wind there is. The difference is just crazy to just hear and feel, you know, how much more I'm just able to plow through the air. Or not even plow, but just pierce through the air and not have all that drag. So that's the tunnel tit right in front of me there. I'm like, ah, I should have, can I go left? Am I gonna make it? Ideally, I would just go straight over it. And I'm like, no. Gonna play it safe, gonna go to the right. I know I can make it over here. I don't have to worry about power lines. If I go to the left there, I could make it around, but then I'm right next to the power lines. And so I did get any lift, I'd be pretty close to the power lines, which is not a safe place. Looks relatively close there, and it is, but I have a lot of options. Even if I got some downdraft, I can turn away. Come on, baby, come on. Come on, let's go. Let's fucking go. <laughs> It's so actually really like the first person, I guess second close perspective there, flying next to those rocks. That's awesome. It feels pretty sweet. Hit close to train. Like oh yes. So super fun soaring along this ridge. Ideally, I'd be on top of it but just didn't have enough altitude when I got to it. So I'm just trying to stay relatively close to it, a safe distance where I could turn away, um, as far enough away if I started to stall on my left wing, I still have plenty of high altitude and distance to recover oh, yeah. away from it. Yeah. And so popping over, looking at those power lines, I'm thinking power lines this whole time. Yeah. Around, like, power lines, power lines, power lines, yeah. gotta clear the power lines, yeah. gotta clear the power lines. Okay, I'm going left, I'm going right, just constantly in my head, looping back. And forth. All right, if this doesn't look like I'm high enough, I go this way, sick. I go that way. Nice and safe. Constantly thinking about that. So I'm really stoked there. Hell yes. Hell yes. Yeah. And yeah, super stoked to get over those. That was kind of the only big thing that I'm worried about on this flight besides having a nice safe landing. Just clearing those lines safely. And you can hear I'm just really excited about that there. Okay. Hopefully he realizes that I'm not pulling my body out. Uh, 
answer that call, but we'll grab yeah, it. Yeah, check the construction site. Um, there's now some fair drivers climbing around there. And over the back and through. So a little bit of radio chatter there with Willie. He launched a few minutes before me. He's up in the air watching me, and he was just commenting, don't try to thermal there. Right just get here. out over to your normal spots on the other side of this little valley that we're looking at here. Try over by the construction site, see how that goes. And so talking with Willie after the flight, um, he was like, hey, did you kind of aim for the roundhouse there? And I was like, yeah, I kind of did angle that way a little bit. So in hindsight, talking to him after, I should have just gone more more to the right, just beeline straight for that construction site. Uh, this ended up working out and it wasn't like dangerous or anything, but just could have had even better luck thermaling if I had just stayed more to the right and gone straight for that construction site here. So a couple adjustments I definitely want to make on this harness. I want to angle myself up a little bit more. I have an adjustment cleat where I could have done it mid-flight, but first time flying it, didn't want to mess around with that. Um, and I've practiced it some, but it's just different in the air. You got a lot of stuff going on. And I don't have a ton of altitude to play around with here, so didn't want to mess with it. I was surviving, but I was just noticing my neck, you know, it's, it was getting strange just holding up my head because I'm at such a more level angle. Kind of maybe need to do some neck exercises or just angle up a little bit, which is less ideal for aerodynamics, but would definitely help just my body posture. Maybe when you see the horizon, which I think would help a lot with like the slight air sickness that I felt on this flight. So coming out here, I was like, my Vario didn't turn on, my automatic flight recorder didn't start recording. I'm definitely gonna invest in a cheap Vario meter, I think. Just, it's nice to have, and just know that it's gonna work. Uh, man, this, that harness got dirty. But yeah, super stoked, fresh harness. I got to adjust the Velcro. Um, it was a little bit tight on the waist. <laughs> Once we got the parachute in there, I probably maybe could have gone a little bit bigger size, but you can move the Velcro out on this particular harness and make it a little bit better fit. So I'm gonna do that, get that dialed in and stoked on that. Yeah, so the harness is a little bit too tight on the chest and I definitely need to take out at least an inch or so on the leg. So I'm not feeling it yet, but my legs and toes started to fall asleep a little bit here just because of that. I didn't have enough length in the harness, so my legs are kind of bent and my feet are jammed into the toe box. Kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> like I said, I was starting to get a little bit airsick during this flight. Almost called it earlier and gave up on thermaling just because of that. But decided it wasn't too bad. It wasn't affecting me and my judgment that much. And so decided to just kind of power through because I was overall having a pretty good time and excited to thermal this flight. And um, it, it really, Amazing thermaling here. I've never thermaled this well in this particular area. If we check out the overlay, I believe this is the highest I've ever been over a point in the ground. So my relative to sea, my relative to sea level altitude has been higher near launch, but I think this is the highest absolute distance above the ground I've been in this section up here. I think I think a little bit higher than I am right now. Apologies for recording this before doing the data overlay. I wanted to try recording this analysis video of me watching it just right after I just got home, done driving home. Just wanted to lock in where everything's still fresh. Let's take a look at this other angle. Okay, so yeah, the angle's not too bad with my head there. I really like it on those cliffs. That looked awesome. Having that angle by my head just being near the cliffs here. I'll probably just keep it mostly on the tail view for this flight.
be the highest I've done above a piece of ground before. Yeah, so you can just see with even out the data overlay, and I felt this in the flight because I don't have an altimeter that I can see. I was like, wow, like I'm actually getting some pretty good ground clearance here. Like it wasn't scary necessarily feeling. I'd say like a slight stomach turn at points where I was just like, whoa, like I'm really up here. Like it's really some distance that I got in there, which is really cool. And you know, it's a slightly new, a little bit nervous feeling, but I wasn't like scared, but definitely like, you know, like, wow, pretty high off the ground here. Yeah, so super stoked. You can see the roundhouse there. I'm getting up above the roundhouse on a few of these turns and really excited with that. I've never worked this thermal that good and really happy with how that turned out. So we see St. Mary's there, the construction site, and I was just playing around with this. I wasn't totally sure. I was trying to really think about getting a tighter spiraling turn, you know, right where I was feeling the lift, but especially without the barometer. I was kind of a little bit unsure of, you know, where exactly that spot was. So I think, you know, I was going out and back and forth, doing loops. I stayed counterclockwise pretty much the whole time. And just never, there was like one point I think where I felt like I was in a nice, tight, slow loop inside of the thermal. But the rest of it, I felt like I was kind of coming in, getting it for a little bit, slowing down, getting some lift, and then kind of popping out of it. And a couple points, I felt, and I think we can kind of see here, really got that downdraft that can appear on the edge of the thermal. Uh, when you got the air going up the middle, it kind of mushrooms out and can push down the sides quite a bit. So definitely felt that in a few points. So yeah, this whole time, I'm just like loving it. Like I got my landing zone in sight, which is great. Don't have any obstacles in the way of that. Just gotta make sure I have enough altitude. Just for reference, I mean, I've literally been like, feet off the ground in this position that I'm in right now before I've been able to make the landing zone fine. So I got plenty of time, plenty of altitude to kind of mess around here, get some good thermal and practice and see what I can figure out if I can really work my way up. In, a, in an ideal world with maybe better thermals or more probably just likely more skill, I could potentially work my way back up this ridge here, you know, thermal up in this spot that I'm in right now, go the direction I'm heading right now and then hit another trigger point, so another point where there's a thermal beam generated off that ridge, get even higher up in that spot, and then keep on moving up. And that's kind of the program when you're doing a cross-country flight, or so I'm told, never done one myself, but kind of, you know, working up ridges, then you go down, working back up ridges, that type of thing. So it felt good getting this practice in here, just getting that confidence of, okay, I can actually thermal, getting some lift, I could potentially move to a new zone if I got just a little bit more lift. But again, here I was like, focusing on a nice safe landing with this new harness. I'm not gonna try to get some crazy new position and get even like a low position up on the ridge. I'd rather just scratch it out here, see what I can find. Once I get to a, a low-ish point, head to the landing zone. And so, We'll see in a little bit here when I decide to do that. But this flight was one of my longer flights. I think maybe top three. Like I said, my app didn't record it all up at the time of the, my top three flights and where this one ranks, right? Over the corner. Yeah, angle of the camera let me know it's much easier for me because I can see my full screen now the camera is behind the monitor before I had it in front but I'm like eh you guys don't need eye contact with me the whole time you'll survive right I'm getting a little sore not gonna lie definitely to adjust this angle a bit my course my head up this whole time I'm a little bit better to try to adjust it in flight I'm talking to myself a little bit there about the angle that I'm hanging at. Say my neck's getting sore. I'm talking about adjusting, and you can see me pushing up at points there. Not good, but I'm pushing up on the bar and just pitching myself up to try to get a more comfortable position. Not ideal. I should have that harness just adjusted better, and I could have done it in flight, and probably should have here because I had so much altitude. I just get that better angle, but I didn't want to risk popping it out off the cleat 
and not be able to get it back in for some reason. We're going to just get one nice, safe mountain flight over the belt before we start trying to mess with this harness in the air. Trading Hill, I met someone, a guy named Jonathan, who flies in Arizona, had seen my videos before. It was kind of a surreal experience. I was like, wow, like, people actually watch these videos that hang glide, and I met someone that had just met me through a video. So, love to get that feedback. If you ever see me out in the wild, definitely say hi, say what's up. Um, he's got a channel as well. Couldn't find it, actually. I searched around, but couldn't find it. Um, it'd be cool if we had some sort of page of hang gliders where we just collected all of the channels so people could just find each other and see other beginners learning. I think it's a helpful resource for sure and just watching other people make mistakes so you don't have to. So that's what I really hope to bring with these videos as well is and that's why I'm just so open about putting the whole video on here is I'm not trying to just cut the highlights, just the fun parts. I want to talk about how it felt for me. Just let everybody analyze however they want. Um, say whatever you want in the comments like I'm open to it. Some of the feedback's good. Some of it, I'm like kind of a head scratcher and I'm like, I'll talk it over with my instructor, Willie. And you know, really appreciate everyone leaving comments. And so please, whoever you are, like anyone leaving yeah. a comment, please continue to leave comments. Uh, even if it's negative, critical feedback, love to hear it, love to hear other opinions and thoughts on that. So thanks, thanks so much for engaging and leaving a comment if you have before. And if you haven't, feel free to drop a comment below. I mean, you will not hurt my feelings. Cautiously confident. I don't. I mean, I, I don't feel like I'm overly pushing it on any of these flights. I don't feel like I'm cocky um, in a sense of reaching outside of my boundaries or overconfident with my abilities. I mean, I definitely am trying to play it safe here. So we hear that beeping again. That freaking beeping that sounds like a sink alarm. We'll see it when I fly out, but I finally saw the break that's doing see him right there yes right there it's like a forklift that goes up on a big extension that's the guy that's going to be but I think, I think I'm sick of I see you guy I see you I saw when I was flying over and I was like ah there it is that's the guy I plan to continue to upload my full flight videos like this, even if I got an hour or more flight. Um, in my head, my rough plan right now is probably my first hundred flights. I will upload the full flights. After that, I may start trimming them. Obviously, I got a ways to go here. We're just at flight 15. Maybe I'll map will change, but it's been really cool to, to watch these flights back. And for anyone starting to that, I'd highly recommend if you can There's slap a GoPro right on there. there do something like this. Record your thoughts. I look back on videos and hear stuff I'm saying, I'm like, wow, I completely forgot how I felt about that. And I'm so glad that I have this, you know, living record of how I felt immediately after a flight or even a couple weeks after the flight went down. Just filled up my scuba logbook and it's cool to look back on those pages as well. 
it's one of those things where it, you do an event like this, you're like, oh, I remember that for sure. And then you look at it a year, two years, 10 years, 20 years later. I'm not old enough to remember stuff from 20 years ago. I'm almost 28 right now. But keep a record, keep a journal, do a vlog like this, write it down. It's, it's cool to look back on and I'm excited, you know, 10 years to look back on these first flights. To see, man, that was crazy. Like, what was I saying? What was I thinking? Hopefully, I'm at a much higher level in 10 years. Hopefully, I'm still flying. So, just really excited for that. Yeah. Side to side here, got extra altitude, just getting a nice little feel for some turns, having fun. So cutting away to the second person here, just keeping my eye on the field, lining up, trying to figure out what height I want to be at, checking all that out, focusing on that 45 degree angle for landing. Really pulling in for some speed here, making sure my legs are out, I'm ready to get out. I love hearing the different sounds. Music to my ears, man. That, that speed, let's go. Good times, good stuff. So just pulling in, burning in. You gotta remember that Jay Fleen advice, no lolly gagging. Just get in there. You don't wanna mess around at this position. Just burn in fast so you know exactly where you're gonna end up. Line up your landing. So here, I'm like, ooh, not really popping up the way I thought I was going to. So talk to Willie afterwards, maybe need to loosen my leg loops a little bit. But I could just not force this harness upright for whatever reason. And just couldn't get my, like, I'm trying to rotate my body up, trying to force it, couldn't get there. So pretty weak flare there. Kind of a belly foot landing combo, but it worked out. Sink it upright. Thanks. Yeah, I had the radio on, but I forgot to take the microphone out to what I could get it. So I heard you, but couldn't talk back. Okay. Yeah, let's go, man. Thanks. That must be uh, one of your longest flights, right? Yeah, my uh, little recorder app didn't record, but I think the GoPros did, so I can look back on there and figure it out from that. So this is my first hang check on the mountain with my new harness. I flew at the training hill a few days ago to test out the new harness, get a feel for it. Everything felt pretty good. I just want to get one last check before I get up in the air with the new harness. It's a little bit tighter than I remembered because we put the parachute in now. Didn't have it on the training oh, hill. You... Had the wrong parachute yeah. bag pack. It was a whole deal. But anyway, got the right device in now. So just really quick, wanted to address how the hang loops okay. look. My backup loops a little bit longer than I've had previously for backup loops, and so that's why it looks like it might be not connected. But trust me, it's connected. Double check that a couple times. So I'm just here waiting for a cycle. Gets a little tiring holding the glider up. So just kind of taking a sec. Waiting for a cycle, making sure everything's good. So I feel a nice cycle coming, pick up the glider, kind of get it up in the wind stream, keeping my nose down so I got good full control of the glider. Don't have to worry about it pitching up or anything on me crazy like that. Thanks so much for watching. 